Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 29th, 2018 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever started investigating a suspicious email just to figure out that it was part of a pen test? Of course, you often don't know until you did much of the analysis. Now, Didi is going over a case like this in his diary from this weekend. And in this case, it was a Word document, not just a link to a web page as you often see him. Didi was able to analyze the document quickly using his slick set of Python tools to extract the text from the Word document. Now, this text in his case was written in Slovak, explained that this particular Word document was part of the pen test. Of course, you should still do a quick look and make sure that this is actually a test and doesn't include any malicious payload. You could see an attacker use a text like this to prevent this particular Word document from being reported. Now, when you investigate Windows malware, one tool often used to download additional documents is the Background Intelligent Transfer System, or BITS for short. It's part of the update system in Windows. For attackers, it plays a role similar to wget and curl on Linux systems. As Xavier explains in his diary from Friday, Bits offers a number of features that are useful to attackers. Bits is intended to download patches. So after downloading a patch, you can run a script to apply the patch. Well, uh, that's part of Bits and of course often abused to then execute the code that was just downloaded. Now, Bits Parser, a tool created by French researchers, can be used to better understand the queue manager files that are being left behind by Bits. So if Bits was used as part of an exploit, these are the files that you do want to understand to figure out what exactly happened, in particular, if the attacker did modify other logs. Another sort of neat feature for the attacker is that Bits is able to limit its bandwidth. So this way it's a little bit more stealthy and doesn't easily trip off any alerts by just chewing up a lot of bandwidth. And coin jacking crypto miners last week affected YouTube. Up to now, this type of attack was usually reserved for secondary sites, not a top site like YouTube. But in this case, the attacker didn't have to compromise YouTube to launch the attack. Instead, the attacker just purchased ads on YouTube that were then used to place this code via the Google-owned advertising network, DoubleClick. Well, whoever was behind the scheme, maybe they deposited their illicit gains in the Japanese cryptocurrency exchange CoinCheck. The attacker stole 500 million NEM tokens from CoinCheck that are valued at about a dollar each. So about $500 million worth of these tokens. Tokens. NEM tokens dropped, however, by 20% to 80 cents as a result of this theft. A coin check restricted a trade of NEM tokens and other altcoins. Cryptocurrency trading platforms continue to remain an easy target for hackers. And while this was one of the largest attacks we have seen so far, they have been rather common. And if you need a reminder to always verify software you download, two websites offering official mirrors for PHP bulletin board were compromised. Malicious versions were offered for download between noon and 3 p.m. UTC on Friday. So uh, these particular servers uh, they were, that were compromised, they weren't operated by PHPBB, but uh, PHPBB is part of its list of mirrors from which you can download PHP bulletin board did list uh, these two servers. The PHP bulletin board team estimates that the software was downloaded less than 500 times during those three hours. Now, good for the PHP bulletin board team is that this particular hack was added to the software, did download JavaScript from another website, and the PHP bulletin board team was able to actually get control of the domain that was used here. So they were able to neuter this particular tag pretty effectively. 
And in the ongoing Spectre patch saga, Microsoft disabled the updates that mitigate Spectre Variant 2, also known as CVE 2017-5715. The patches were removed on Saturday and Microsoft removed them because Intel reported issues with these fixes. These patches weren't actually sort of core Microsoft patches. Instead, they were microcode that Intel provides for its processors, so not strictly a Microsoft patch. But what happens with this microcode is that whenever you reboot your system, the microcode has to be loaded into the CPU. And that's something the operating system has to do during boot up. So that's why Microsoft Windows includes these microcode blobs that are then being loaded into the processor. So at this point, not much you can do about this. If you already applied the patch and it works fine, then leave it alone. If you didn't apply the patch yet, just uh, wait, I guess, for the next version to be released. And well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.